Hello everyone. So in the last video we were having a discussion regarding the network layer and in this also we will continue our discussion regarding the network layer but now uh, in this video we will take uh, the IP datagram and we will see what are the components of IP header and we will elaborate each and every component of IP header and what is their responsibility for all those IP headers. Okay. Now if you want to download the PDF of this PPT, I mean uh, uh, the P PDF of this presentation that I am recording here is also available on our website which is www.dgmentor.com. So you can go to the website and over there you can go to the download section and you can find the PDF copy of the same presentation and PPT that I am recording here. Okay. So let's start our discussion and here we will start our discussion with uh, the network layer. So obviously uh, till this point of time we already had a discussion regarding the data link layer and we were currently having the discussion regarding the network layer. Now in the network layer there are four major types of protocols. One is IGMP that is internet group messaging protocol or you can say internet group management protocol. Second is ICMP that is internet control messaging protocol and then we have IP and then we have ARP that is address resolution protocol. So IP is internet protocol. Now out of all these four protocols one of the most important or you can say the major protocol in the network layer is the IP protocol or you can say the IP protocol is the heart and soul of the network layer and all the other protocols for example we have ICMP protocol and ARP protocol they are meant to basically help the IP protocol even this ICMP protocol which is uh, showing us the error messages so the main responsibility of ICMP protocol is about the error message we will see this ICMP protocol later on because currently we are, our discussion is related to the IP so ICMP protocol is helping IP protocol to perform its operation so the most important protocol that you can encounter in the network layer is the IP protocol and the transport layer we have the important protocols like SCTP, TCP and UDP so currently this discussion is regarding the IP protocol so we will take the IP protocol and we will see all the details regarding the IP protocols one by one. Now the first one is that IP protocol is an unreliable datagram protocol and it is a best effort delivery service. Why we say that IP4 uh, is an unreliable protocol? See uh, as you can see here the IP protocol that we are discussing here. So we are currently studying the IPv4 protocol that is internet protocol version 4. A part of this we also have IPv6 protocol in the syllabus now. So just few years back around I think 2-3 uh, years back uh, IPv6 protocol was introduced and uh, IPv4 protocol was there from the last 10, 15, 20 years. Um, from IPv4 protocol they directly jumped to the IPv6 protocol they skipped the IPv5 protocol because IPv5 protocol could not fulfill the requirement of so fastly growing so vastly growing internet because our internet and the network is going so fast that uh, we feel that IPv5 protocol cannot keep up for the next even for the next 10 years so that is why we try to introduce a protocol which should be reliable for the next 50 to 100 years so they introduced the IPv6 protocol that is internet protocol version 6 and they feel that uh, IPv6 protocol will be enough for the next 50 years of the operation. As you can see internet has, has grown tremendously, tremendously in last 10 to 15 years. So tremendous growth we have seen. So that is why uh, it, as it is growing exponentially so we have to grow the protocol we have to grow all the you know protocols and the rules that we are using tremendously according to to come up with the fast pace growing internet so that is why ipv5 protocol was neglected so I, after ipv4 directly ipv6 protocol we have introduced so currently here we are studying the ipv6 protocol so ipv4 protocol we are currently studying the ipv4 protocol and we will start with the header format of this IP4 protocol that is internet protocol version 4. Now the first thing that you can encounter here is that IP4 protocol is an unreliable protocol. Why do we call it as unreliable because it is basically best effort delivery service. Now you see that we have a TCP protocol which works in the transport layer. TC protocol works in the transport layer and this IP protocol works in the network layer. Now this TCP protocol which works in transport layer this is a connection oriented protocol. It is a connection 
oriented protocol but this ip protocol is a connection less protocol it is a connection less protocol so we already had i think we already had a discussion regarding connection oriented and connection less also but uh, just for a recap now this tcp protocol uh, when the first packet of this tcp protocol will go through the network it will reserve some bandwidth some path for the upcoming packet so that they can also follow the same path but in case of ip protocol because it is a connection pro protocol so whenever you are transmitting data or you are transferring data from sender to the receiver now these data packets can follow different paths throughout the network that is why we call it as a connectionless protocol and secondly we call it as best effort delivery service what exactly is the best effort delivery service that it says that we will try our best to deliver the packet but sometimes if we are we failed to deliver the packet then we cannot guarantee its success so we will try our best to deliver the packet it might happen that sometimes the packet will get discarded sometimes the packet will get lost throughout the network so if you see the term best effort means the ip4 protocol packets can be corrupted be lost or arrive out of order or be delayed so why they will arrive out of order because ip4 ip protocol is a connection less protocol so if you see uh, if this is a sender and this is the receiver so between this sender and the receiver there might be multiple paths there might be multiple networks that that are present so every packet can follow different path here okay before getting to the receiver so it might happen that uh, some packet are going through this path it might happen that uh, some packet here are following this path so uh, some packets these packets can follow different paths and obviously because these packets can follow different path and every packet is having uneven delay some uh, paths are having uh, more delay some paths are having less delay so it may happen that when the all the packets uh, will reach to the receiver these packets will be out of order out of order means out of sequence now this might be due to congestion of the network now if you want to ensure uh, reliability in ip protocol then you have to combine this ip protocol with other protocols for example we have tcp protocol so that we can achieve reliability in ip okay now this is just an example of best effort delivery service and i feel uh, you all feel as amused when i say uh, the name of indian postal service so uh, right now these days the service has improved a lot drastically the service has improved but earlier what used to happen in in 1970s 80s and 90s so whenever you try to send some letter to uh, a person on the other hand so sometimes uh, they will try to deliver the message they will try try to deliver the letter but sometimes uh, the letter is not at all delivered so at th at that point when the letter was not delivered so uh, they do not inform the sender that letter is delivered as well as they do not inform the receiver that uh, someone tried to send your message so that is a best effort delivery service so just just read out here so post office does its best to deliver the regular mail but it does not always succeed so if an unregistered letter is lost or damaged it is up to the sender or would be recipient to discover this so it is the responsibility of the sender or the receiver to uh, discover that the message that was sent is not delivered is delivered or not so the post office itself does not keep track of every letter and cannot notify a sender of loss or uh, damage of a letter so this is just an example of best effort delivery service so we have already seen in the past that sometimes the letter is getting delivered after 10 years or 15 years or 20 years in indian postal service so uh, we cannot guarantee when uh, the letter is going to be is lost or not so it happened in the past so it just just take it as a on a joke purpose now uh, we have seen that uh, this ip4 is a connectionless protocol that uses the datagram approach now what exactly is a datagram approach datagram approach means you are going to divide the packets into datagram let me show you to with an example okay so there are various messages or packets that are present in the different layers of ip so what happens is uh, if there's some user is there and user is uh, try to generate some message so user user was working on some kind of applications maybe it is whatsapp maybe it is web browser or any kind of application 
maybe let us say the user is using whatsapp okay so user tried to enter some data you try to send some message to your girlfriend maybe boyfriend or maybe someone in your family or someone i mean you just try to uh, send some message okay as soon as you created the message that message will go through the application layer to the transport layer now in the transport layer we have a protocol that is called as a tcp protocol now this tcp protocol in the transport layer it will add its own uh, sorry uh, so when this data will go to the application layer now this application layer will add its own header so application layer takes the data from the user uh, for example you are sending a message through a whatsapp now whatsapp is going to encrypt your message and at the same time when you are going to send the message it is going to contain some information regarding the message for example when the message was created now for example i just uh, write while creating this video i just take my phone i just send a message and press send message button in that case let us say i send the message as uh, 3 pm 40 uh, 46th minute 56th second or something so this is some kind of information regarding that packet some kind of information regarding that message so the message should be delivered instantly in the same way we can have different kinds of uh, what we say messages different kinds of applications that may be having different kinds of requirement the application can be your web browser where you are trying to browse the internet the application can be your mail client where you are trying to send a simple email to your friend that is smtp the application may be your instant messaging service for example whatsapp is an instant messaging service in the same way there are different kinds of applications which may be having different kinds of headers so when the user gives the data to the application now this application adds its own header to the message and then it delivers this entire message to the transport layer now what does this transport layer do is in transport layer we use a protocol that is called as tcp now this in the transport layer the tcp protocol adds its own header to the message or the data that it caught from the application layer so in the application layer we had a user data plus we added a header now this user data and header we placed here and with that we added a tcp header and when this is given to the network layer i mean this entire tcp segment when this tcp segment is given to the network layer in the network layer we add the ip header with it ip header now what is this what does this header means actually this header contains additional information for example in case of ip the header will contain from where the message has arrived to whom you are sending the message which protocol are you using what kind of what is the total length of the message what is the length of the header what is some kind of information regarding the network also for example do you want to fragment this entire packet or not there are some different kinds of information that you are going to store in the message in the header so in in a broad sense header mostly acts as a metadata regarding the data that you want to send so whatever the data you want to send this header acts as a metadata it contains information regarding the payload that it is currently having now you can see here in this layer this uh, network layer is going to add its own header because we are using an ip protocol here therefore the network layer is going to add as ip header in the same way we had something called as a tcp header so tcp uh, this uh, transport layer adds tcp header and then we have the application data that we caught from the application layer so we also had application header and when we will give this message to the data link layer further the data link layer is going to divide the message divide the entire packet in terms of something called as frames and the size of the frame will be dependent on your mtu that is called as a maximal transmittable unit maximum transmission unit or maximum transferable unit so there are different names i'll cover all of them one by one so when the message will get to the data link layer it will the data link layer will divide the message into something called as a frame so this is uh, the frame so every frame will be having a frame header and it will be having a frame trailer so in the end here you can see this is is this is the entire packet that we got 
in this entire packet every layer added some different kinds of information for example this data link layer adds its header so data link layer header then the transport layer, this network layer added the ip header then transport layer added the tcp header and then this uh, application layer added its application header application header and then you have the message which is your payload and after this uh, we'll be having a trailer trailer from this data link layer so you can see just to send a very small message just to send a single message what is the different kind of information we have to add so we have to add so many different information just to send a single message from the sender to the receiver this is what happens when you send a message here now we this we are currently in this video we are discussing about this ip header i mean what is what are all the information that this ip header is currently containing now let us look at all this informations one by one so uh, the packets that is used by the ip are called as datagrams and this datagram is a variable length packet consisting of two parts one is a header and the payload and the header can be of 20 bytes to 60 bytes in length and it contains the essential information regarding the route and the delivery of the message we we'll see what are those in essential information now look at this uh, diagram now in this diagram we have represented the entire datagram this is representing an entire datagram okay and we are looking at this ip header and you see before this ip header this data is actually containing various parts it is containing the message it is containing the tcp header it is containing uh, even the application layer header and it is uh, i mean this is the information that this data is having but still we are only interested in studying the ip header here now in the ip header we have the various fields various fields means i mean what is the various kind of information this ip header is having the first field is the version second is the header length then we have ds field actually this ds field is a very uh, this field changed a lot in the past time earlier this used this field was used to known as a type of service field which also defined the priority i think i've already created a video on the ds field so i'll attach that video the, with uh, this folder and then we have a total length field we have identification field we have some flags we have fragment offset we have time to live field we have protocol we have header checksum we have source ip destination ip and some options but uh, let us just look at these fields one by one now when we get an ip datagram in that ip datagram this header length is not variable i mean the minimum length of this header can be 20 bytes and the maximum length of this header can be of 60 bytes that is totally dependent on the information that it is having now you see this diagram here this diagram is representing your ip header it is representing your ip header now in this ip headers we have various fields for example the very first field here is a version field now version field demonstrates or denotes which version it is it for example here because it is we are studying ip4 header so here in this version field by default we are storing the version as 4 therefore because it is a 4 bit field so this version field is going to store 0 1 0 0 that is version in binary then we have this header length field now this header length field tells what is the length of this entire header i mean what is the total length of this entire header now why do we actually need this header length field we need it because the length of the header is not fixed so you can see the minimum length of the header can be 20 it can be 60 it can also be 32 byte it can also be 40 bytes it can also be i mean uh, the length can vary there can be different kinds of length of this header so because the header length field the length of the header is not fixed that is why to keep track of this we needed a specific field which is the header length field it is a mandatory field it should be there it should be there because we don't know what is the total length of the header next is a service type field and now this service type field is now called as ds field it has updated a lot earlier it used to we used to call it a service type field now the name has changed 
the various information that we used to store in this field that is changed. So I am going to add a video here which will completely demonstrate what is the service type field. And then we have the total length field. Actually, this total length field is going to store the total length of this complete datagram, including the header. Now, this total length field contains the total length of this IP datagram. Then we have identification field. We have flags. We have basically three flags here. One is reserved. Second is do not fragment. That is DA, D field. It is also called as DF field. And second is the third flag is more fragment that is MF field. So this is actually three bits which we store here. And then we have something called as fragment offset field. And then time to leave, protocol, header checksum, IP, destination and so on. Now for your examination you have to remember the size of each and every field. This entire diagram you should be able to memorize, you should be able, you should be able to recall this entire diagram in your examination hall. So I feel that if you practice or uh, better is if you just try to understand what every field means then I think you will be able to remember uh, this entire diagram. Now why the size of this is uh, variable is you see uh, every row here the first row is representing the version field is 4 bits then we have the header length field which is also 4 bits then we have service type field which is of 8 bits then we have total length field which is of 16 bits. So if we add all of them it is going to be 32 bits. So in every row you are going to store 4 bytes of data. So these rows these are important and mandatory. So in the first row you are storing 32 bits, here also you are storing 32 bits, here also you are using 32 bits and here also you are using 32 bits of source IP and you are using 32 bit of destination IP. So these 20 bytes of information should be there in the header at all times. These 20 bytes are actually mandatory. These 20 bytes are necessary. Then we have the rest 40 bytes here. These 40 bytes are optional. So uh, this that is why this also this field is also called as options and uh, we also add some padding bits here in this 40 bytes. The length of this entire IP protocol here, it can be 20 bytes plus these 40 bytes. In these 40 bytes, we store uh, various kinds of information. We can store some IP addresses. We can store different kinds of information. So uh, sometimes we might use all the 40 bytes. Sometimes we might not use. Maybe we might use only 12 bytes. We might use only 20 bytes. So that is why the length of the IP headers is not fixed. It can be variable. It can vary. Okay. Now let us uh, discuss about each and everything field one by one. The first field here is the version field. Okay. Now look at the version field. So version field uh, field stores the numbers number which is showing the version of the IP protocol. So because we are use, we are studying IP4 protocol, so version field is also going to store 4, num number as 4. This and IPv6 header is completely different than IPv4 header. Uh, they are two different kinds of, you know, headers. They store different kinds of information because they have updated it. Okay. Now, do one thing, uh, make this entire header in your notebook, try to make a diagram for this entire header. And uh, when I'm going to discuss with every field, just refer to your notebook, refer to that page where you have drawn this header and I'm going to take each and every field one by one. So the first field here is version. So version is 0100. So it stores this four bits of information which says that the version is four. If you convert this binary number to four uh, to decimal, then it will say the version is four. Now, the next is a header length field, which is a four bit field, four bit field. Now, what is the minimum number that you can store with a four bit? So minimum number can be, so in header length field, it is a four bit field, four bit field. Now with this four bit, the minimum number can be zero, 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 zero. And maximum number can be 1111, which is equal to 15. So it is only storing number between 0 to 15. But you see that length of this entire header can be between 20 to 60 bytes. 20 to 60 bytes. So we cannot represent this entire header uh, length with this header length field. Therefore, we have to make this header length field as scalable. Or you can say 
multipliable so we use this header length field as a multiple of 4 multiple of 4 now for example if i say in this header length field i have stored a number which is 1000 in the header length field i have stored a number which is 1000 so 1000 it means if you convert this number to decimal this number to decimal it will give you a number which is 8 multiply this 8 by 4 that is going to give you 32 so we say that entire length of the header is 32 byte so whatever the number is stored in the header length field multiply with that number by 4 that will tell you the length of the entire header here the length of the entire header if the number stored is 8 so the length of the entire header is going to be 8 multiplied by 4 which is 32 now let us say here in this header length field i have stored a number which is 0010 if you see this 0010 0010 convert this number from binary to decimal you see that this number is 2 then multiply 2 by 4 that is going to be 8 so it means the length of the header is 8 bytes but you see the minimum length of the header is 20 bytes therefore this number is not at all possible this number is not at all possible therefore the minimum length that you are going to store the minimum number that you are going to store in the header length field that should demonstrate 20 bytes so in this header length field the minimum value the minimum value that you are going to store that is going to be 10101 which is in decimal 5 so if you multiply 5 by 4 that is going to be how much 20 so it is showing the size of the header is 20 bytes now if the header length field is to storing the number 1111 which is representing a number 15 therefore <coughs> multiply 15 by 4 which gives a number 60 therefore the size of this entire header is now 60 bytes so this header length field is actually demonstrating the header of uh, the length of this entire header now sometimes if something like this happens that uh, the length of the header is not a multiple of 4 for example here let us say we use all these 20 bytes of information 20 bytes here because these are mandatory then in the options field in the options field i have stored only 2 byte of information therefore the total length of this header is 22 bytes but you can see here in the header length field because it is a multiple of 4 therefore because it is a multiple of 4 so it should always get a number which is multiple of 4 now this 22 is not a multiple of 4 when the length of the header is not a multiple of 4 in that case i am going to add some extra bits here which is called as a padding or you can say the padding bits so we are going to pad or add some dummy bits to make the length of the entire header as a multiple of 4 this is what the header length field is okay so just let us just look at some uh, information regarding the header length field so the header length field defines the total length of the datagram header in 4 byte words in 4 byte words that is why this is the multiple of 4 so receiver needs to multiply the value of this field by 4 to find the total length of header to find the total length of header this is how we use the header length field so we know what is a version field we know what is a header length field for service type field i have created a separate video for this just go and watch that video i mean after this uh, right now you don't need to study within this video you don't need to study the service type field but after this video I uh, added one more video I have recorded that video earlier so where I have specified the service type field so right now here we are going to discuss the field which is the total length field total length now what exactly this total length field so total length field is going to give you the length of this entire IP datagram this entire IP datagram so this total length field is of 16 bit therefore the minimum number minimum number that you can demonstrate with 16 bits is all 16 zeros all 16 zeros 
which is a minimum number of 0 and the maximum number will be all 16 ones which is 1111111111 and 1111 which is demonstrating a number which is 2 raised to power 16 minus 1. Therefore, this total length field can store the maximum number which is 65,535. But you see the minimum length of the header is going to be 20 bytes. So this total length field is also going to store a minimum of number which is 20 and the maximum the number which is 65,535. I mean 65,535. And this total length field demonstrate the total length of packet with one byte. I mean with every byte. For example, if I say the length of the entire packet is 4000 bytes. So in the total length field, we will store a binary number which is representing a decimal number which is 4000. So for every byte, we will store a number. For every byte, we will store a number. So total length field demonstrate the total length of this packet. Okay. So if you know the total length of the packet and you, then you want to find out the length of the payload, then it will be total length minus header length total length minus header length. So if you want to find the length of payload, length of payload, it is going to be total length, total length minus whatever the information, whatever the information that is stored here in header length in decimal, multiply that information by four. So you'll get the payload length. You'll get the payload length. Just look at this formula here. So length of the data packet is the total length field minus header length field multiplied by 4 so we'll get the length of the data packet that is the total length field so the question is why do we actually need the total length field so in every case every time we don't require the total length field only in some specific cases we are going to require this total length field so there are occasions in which datagram is not only the thing encapsulated in the frame it will also be padded padding that has to be added. Now for example here as, as I told you in the previous case that uh, uh, sometimes this information is 20 bytes and in the options field you are storing 2 bytes of information so total you are going to have 22 bytes. But you have to store some extra information some extra pads padding bits uh, you can store some padding bits here as well as here uh, for the payload also you are going to store some padding bits. The reason is in for example ethernet the length the minimum length of the packet that you can send that minimum length is also fixed and the maximum length is also fixed in ethernet ethernet means lan in lan uh, the maximum length that we found out according to experiment by experimenting we find out that maximum length that you can send is 1500 bytes for a data packet that is also called as mtu and minimum that length that should set, you should send is 46 bytes so sometimes if the message is less than 46 bytes for example let us say you started whatsapp in whatsapp you just write, uh, written hi so you are going to send this hi to the receiver now with this this hi is just two uh, characters for two characters maybe you can represent two characters by two bytes or maybe you can represent the two characters by four byte two bytes in sky and four bytes in unicode Okay, so you can just represent this four byte of information with this four bytes of two, this high information with just four bytes of character. Or sometimes nowadays, whenever you have to write OK, for OK, we have a shortcut which is just write K. When you send K to your friend on WhatsApp. So that is a very small information. So because it is a very, very small information, that is why we have to add some extra information with this. We have to pad some extra bit with this so that we can send this message through your LAN or so through the network. So that is why sometimes you have to add some extra information with the data packet and that is called as padding. So if the size of the IP4 datagram is less than 46 bytes, then some padding will be added to meet this requirement. Now in this case, when a machine decapsulates the datagram, it needs to check the total length field to determine how much really is the data and how much is the padding that is how much is the extra information that you have added and how much really is the data that you wanted to send that is why we need the total length field and it is a obviously it is an important field okay now 
we have seen the virgin field we have seen the header length field and we have seen the total length field actually we are going to discuss these fields in more detail in upcoming videos i'm just discussing a brief idea with you brief introduction about all these fields one by one so the next row here is uh, representing your identification flags and fragment offset now this second row is basically it is create for fragmentation it is creating we have created this field for fragmentation this field actually very very important and very uh, interesting also uh, there are some numericals that i can include in this field to make it interesting so we have three things one is identification second is flag and third is fragment offset now what exactly this identification identification means whenever a datagram you are going to get a datagram from the network layer for with that datagram i am going to add some identification information just like an id number okay let us let me just explain it to you with an help of an example okay this is the sender this is the receiver and sender is sending network data through this network and these are representing frames or you can say these are representing fragments actually these fragments these frames this fragmentation is done here at the data link layer okay let me show you why and how see this is representing i think if this diagram is not visible uh, just take out a pdf from the website uh, www.dgmetro.com from there you can uh, see this diagram clearly i feel that sometimes this diagram might not be visible while you are watching the video in low resolution try to see if you can watch the video in high resolution this diagram will be visible but understand we have the first three layers are application presentation and session so in the application presentation session a message is created now you give this message to the transport layer in this transport layer so transport layer is going to add its header and it is going to add its message okay then this message is given to the network layer network layer is going to take the packet this entire packet from the transport layer it is going to put this packet here it will be called as payload payload and it will add its own header so we are currently this studying this header now now the interesting part comes exactly here so this entire packet sometimes it can become large huge huge according to the requirement for example sometimes a user want to send a 4 gb of file to the friend or you want to upload some video on youtube so the file size will be bigger now because the file size is bigger therefore this message size will also get bigger this message size will also increase so message size is variable remember message size is variable it can be a very small message it can be a very large message small message like just sending hi on whatsapp very large message means you are uploading a big video file on youtube you are uploading a big uh, files on google drive or youtube so message size can also be large it can also be small so this entire packet at the network layer this entire packet can become huge or it can become large but your network for example you are using a ethernet now ethernet network might not be able to hold this entire packet because of the limitation of the hardware that you are using on your routers or on your host or on your network or the limitations that is imposed by the software so limitation might be imposed by the software it might be imposed by the hardware but generally in ethernet as as i told you in ethernet the size of a packet or the size of a frame can be maximum of 1500 byte so what i'm going to do is if let us say this is of 4000 bytes then i have to divide this packet into smaller frames so i'm going to divide this packet in smaller frames and these the size of this frame will be dependent on mtu that is called as maximal maximum transmissible unit or maximum transmittable unit or maximal maximum transferable unit there are multiple names for mtu all mean the same transmittable transferable transmissionable or transmission 
okay what is the maximum size of the frame that you can send through the network that is called as mtu that's it so i'm going to take this packet from the network layer and i'm going to divide this packet on two smaller frames in the data link layer and with every frame i'm going to add some extra information if you zoom in one frame you'll see there's a header there's a message then there's a trailer so there are three information in every frame for example frame number one frame number two frame number three these three informations are there okay then you are going to send this entire message through your uh, transmission media or let us say this first router that has encountered now in every router understand this clearly in every router we are having at least three layers why i'm saying at least because some routers might be able to and uh, might be having transport layer also but in every router we are having three layers that is physical data link and network okay so this router will take the packet from the physical layer it will read the packet from the data link layer i mean it will every router will read the packet it will process the packet it will store the packet and then it will forward the packet by modifying the information by modifying the information as i told you there are three kinds of thing i told this to you multiple times i told you that we have a port to port connectivity we have host to host connectivity and we have hop to hop connectivity so this data link layer deals with hop to hop connectivity i mean it deals with sending the data from one hop to another hop and what are the hops here so this host to this first router is one hop from this router to the next router is another hop from this router to the next router is another hop so it only deals with the hop to hop connectivity because in this data link layer we we also take the machine address or you can say mac address with the help of in network layer we take ip address ip logical address of every host but in data link layer we deals with the uh, machine address i mean mac address so this frame will then be given to this router this router is going to take this frame it will read it will discard its previous header and trailer it will discard the previous information i mean it decapsulate it so whenever you are going from up down here then you are that means you are encapsulating the packet encapsulating the packet and whenever we are going from bottom to up that means we are decapsulating the packet so here in this data link layer we are going to decapsulate the packet we are going to remove the header and the trailer of the data link layer and then we will give this packet to the network layer now in the network layer on this router you can see in the network layer on the on every router the network layer is going to read the you know ip address because every router is going to maintain a routing table and that routing table in uh, contains the information regarding the ip address and the corresponding interface interface i mean through which path you have to follow for example if this is a router so there are multiple paths after this router here and there's a path message which is coming to this so it is interface 0 interface 1 interface 2 so whenever a message this router will receive a message it will read the ip address to which it has to forward the message and for that ip address it is going to read through which interface it has to for forward the packet again for that it is mandatory it is important for the router to read the packet till the network layer so router will read the packet till the network layer and after reading the packet till network layer it will get the ip address information and then it will decide to which interface i have to forward the packet to which path i have to forward the packet to which path i have to forward the packet so to forward the packet again it will start encapsulating the packet it will start encapsulating the packet from the network layer onwards so every router is going to read the data till network layer then it will change the header of the network layer it will change the header of the data link layer 
and then it will again forward the packet through the interface to the next router. Again the next router is going to read the data till network layer and then it will again encapsulate it with the new header for network layer for data link layer and again it will forward the packet to a certain kind of interface and finally the receiver will receive the packet this is your entire process okay so this process is interesting but uh, i have to show how this ip address what are the values of this ip address how this the values of this ip address changes with each of these each of these routers we need to understand this information how uh, this values of this ip address is getting changed okay let us take this informations one by one so first of all you need to understand what is the maximum transfer unit or maximum sometimes it is also called as transmittable unit i call this word many times here or trans transmission unit maximum transmission unit or so so this is a maximum size of the frame that you can send through the data link layer so each data link layer protocol has its own frame format one feature of each format is a maximum size of payload that can be encapsulated in other words when the datagram is encapsulated in a frame the total size of datagram must be less than the maximum size so this is your ip datagram that is you got from the ip layer this is the payload that you got from transport layer you give this to a frame and it becomes a frame payload so this data link layer add its own header it add its own trailer and it put the frame here in this payload so what happens when i say the total mtu is 1500 bytes so let us say if i say the mtu of a network is 1500 bytes through ethernet you can only transfer a maximum frame size of 1500 and what is this frame this is that frame that you can only transfer a maximum frame size of 1500 so with that 1500 in tcp layer we are going to have something called as mss that is maximum segment size i'm going to discuss the maximum segment size when i'm going to take the tcp layer then in ip layer and in ethernet layer we talks about the mtu that is maximal transmittable unit now in this maximum transmittable unit you have a payload you have the tcp header you have the ip header so this packet is then uh, if the total size of this packet you can see the maximum payload that we can have here is 1460 bytes if the ethernet size i mean if in case of ethernet the mtu is 1500 so the total size of the payload can be 1460 bytes that is 1460 bytes plus we are going to add 20 bytes of header for transport layer plus we are going to add 20 bytes of header from uh, network layer so total size becomes 1500 bytes if i say the mtu is 1500 bytes that means that means that the maximum packet size that you can trans uh, you can send in one frame that you got from network layer is 1500 i'll take this example again but again you see then we add a ethernet header which is of 14 bytes and ethernet trailer which is of 4 bytes so if i say the mtu is 1500 bytes that means i'm going to transfer 1520 bytes of one frame size so frame size can be of 1520 bytes 1520 bytes okay so if in in any network if i say through this network the mtu is 1500 mtu is 1500 and we are getting a message from network layer which is let us say 4000 bytes okay now we are going to divide this message into smaller uh, into smaller messages and the size of every message here will be less than 1500 less than or equal to 1500 and then we'll add a header on this and we'll add a trailer on this message and then we'll make it as a frame so in every frame in every frame if mtu if mtu is 1500 so in every frame we have the payload of 1500 bytes 
will be having a header of data link layer will be having a trailer of data link layer so which may be 1520 bytes or something i mean so mt is 1500 so that means payload is of 1500 maximum that you can transfer okay now let us see what are the different values or uh, how this fragmentation is done through this network okay i think the video will become long so i'll make a second part of this video where i'm going to explain every process of fragmentation one by one okay hello everyone so in the past video we were discussing about this ip4 datagram and in the past video we have already seen the first two rows of this ip4 datagram and now we are going to discuss about the third row but before that we have to discuss about the fragmentation reassembly algorithm so this is a fragment reassembly algorithm i've taken this algorithm from uh, your book that is frozen book you can read this algorithm here so let me just read it out first and then let me explain to you with an example how this algorithm is working so i'll just read it out plain reading in this uh, algorithm you can pause the video and you can also read it here so every fragment in an ip4 datagram can follow different paths for example assuming that this is your uh, let me just change the color of the pen so assuming that this is your network okay so in your network there are various routers that are present there can be any any kind of configuration of this network now in this network every router here they can every uh, datagram can take different path for example one datagram can go through this path another datagram can go through this path one datagram can also take this path and so on so there any datagram can take different paths in the network and assuming that this is your uh, destination router this is representing your destination and this router here it is representing your source now because the mtus of this different paths can be different therefore a single packet can be uh, divided into multiple multiple packets according to the path that we have seen already in the previous video now as you can see here it is obvious that even if each fragment follows a different path they can arrive out of order and the final destination home host can reassemble the original datagram from the fragments received that means this destination should reassemble all the fragments that it has received so these fragments can take different path the fragment the data can follow this path the data can follow this path the data can follow this path any path the fragments can follow but at the end all these fragments will reach in the destination to this destination now it is the responsibility of this destination that it has to reassemble all these fragments so that it can find the meaningful information from these fragments now this reassembly algorithm is given here so how to reassemble these packets and secondly these packets can be out of order out of order out of order means they can it is not necessary that all these packets uh, are in the same sequence it can happen that these packets are coming out of order that means uh, the sequence may not be followed okay so for reassembly we are going to look at the offset so as you can see we have uh, seen two fields one is the mf field and second is the df field in your ip4 packet datagram mf field means this more fragment is following mf is more fragment and df is do not fragment so here we are checking about the mf field and we have the offset of uh, for the diagrams so you can see the first fragment has an offset field value of 0 and then divide the length of the first fragment by 8 the segment fragment offset will be equal to that result and then divide the total length of first plus the second fragment by 8 the third fragment has that offset value equal to that result and continue this uh, process until the last fragment has this more fragment field as 0 and continue this process the last fragment has a more bit value of 0 now what does this mean so assuming here yeah, this is your entire diagram that we have already seen we have already seen this diagram in the previous videos now what happens is this is your sender now this sender sent some packets so these are the frames or you can say fragments fragment number one fragment number two fragment number three 
Now this fragment number one is following this path and even fragment number three is following this path but fragment number two is following this path and because the m2 of this path is smaller that way that is why fragment number two is now further fragmented into two more fragments and further this fragment number two is following this path now at the destination these packets are coming out of order out of order now it is a responsibility of the destination to reassemble these fragments and for, for reassembling purposes the destination has to apply the searching and sorting algorithm searching and sorting algorithm what do you mean by searching and sorting you have to search where is the first fragment then you have to search where is the second fragment then you have to search where is the third fragment and then you have to search where is the fourth fragment so you have to follow the different searching and sorting algorithms at the destination to implement this function so as you can see here this is your original datagram and this is representing your fragment number 2 okay sorry uh, this is your original datagram now this original datagram here uh, the original message is represented by this so as you can see the offset of the original, original message is 0 and here we are sending different informations here and here this is representing that more fragment field is 0 so more fragment field is 0 that means there is no other fragment that is uh, behind this so as soon as this message is sent through this interface now here this single packet is divided into three different packets so the first packet here is this one the first packet is having offset value as 0 the second packet here it is represented by f2 and here the offset value is 175 then how did you got this 175 actually you got this 175 by dividing this length of the fragment for example you can see uh, this is the value which is 1420 now here we have 20 bytes of header and here we have 1400 bytes of data so divide 1400 by 8 then you can get this value which is 175 this is the thing that we have already seen in the previous videos now here the offset value is 175 and here see the more fragment field is 1 and here also the more fragment field is 1 that means after this there is one more packet and because here the more fragment field is 1, one therefore after this there is one more packet and further here after this there is no other packet that is coming that is why uh, no other fragment that is coming that is why here the more fragment field is 0 and here the offset is thir uh, 350 why the offset is 350 is because you are going to take this value which is uh, 1420 and you are going to take this value which is 1420 here 20 bytes are header so if you add 1400 plus 1400 that is 2800 so I am just ignoring this 20 so if you divide this 2800 by 8 then you can find out this offset value we have already seen in the previous video and further this fragment number 2 is further divided into two more fragments here as you can see and here again uh, the more fragment fields are 1 and offset values are also changed now when these packets reached at the destination now how will the destination will identify out of all these four packets which is the first packet for the first packet it is going to check the offset value so offset value of the first packet is going to be zero so as you can see it is zero okay then how will it check the second packet so it will divide the length of the first packet by eight and then you can find out what is the offset of the second packet for example the length of the first packet is 1400 so it divides this 1400 by 8 and after dividing this 1400 by 8 it gets the offset value is 175 so this 175 is the offset value of the second packet so wherever this offset value 175 is reached then it is the offset value of the second packet and because here more fragment field is 1 so further it is going to take the first packet which is of 1400 byte and the second packet which is of 800 byte and it is going to add both of them and further it is going to divide this by 8 and then you can find out what is where is the third packet because then you are going to get the offset value of the third packet in the same way by looking at the offset values it can it can sort the packets uh, sorting and searching algorithms can be applied it can sort the packet 
and for the last packet who whatever the last packet is here the more fragment field is going to be zero that means it identifies that this is the last packet so you know how to identify the first packet you know how to identify the last packet and you know how to identify the sequences how to identify the first packet by looking at the offset value so offset value is zero for the first packet how to identify the last packet by looking at the more fragment field so more fragment field of the last packet is zero how to identify the sequences just divide the lengths by it and you can find out the offset values and you can sort these packets according to their offset values so that you can apply the searching and sorting algorithm to get the sequence of the packet so that you can do reassembly of the packets so this is a very basic reassembly algorithms in case of your ip4 datagram now till this point of time we have seen these two rows which is a version field we have seen the header length field we have seen the service type field we have seen the total length field we have seen the identification we have seen the flag bits and we have seen the fragment offset field now in this video we are going to discuss about this third row which is uh, having three fields with the time to leave field the protocol field and the header checksum field so we'll start with the time to leave field what is this time to leave field in case of your ib4 datagram so the first field is time to leave now what exactly is the time to leave so what happens is in a network when you are sending one datagram now that datagram might be having uh, some path that is there. Okay, let me just explain to you with a better example here. Assuming that this is your sender, and now sender is sending packets through some routers. Okay, but in their routing table, what is happening is uh, the destination is updated in such a way that this packet might go to infinite loop like this. So how will the packet identify where is the next uh, path that is by using the algorithms. Okay. So when you are sending a packet it might happen that packet can uh, follow an infinite loop in the network. Sometimes it can happen when the destination is not reachable the packet might go to infinite loop uh, by the routers and that way if the sender is sending many packets then all these packets will be stuck in infinite loop which will result in choking of the network choking of the network choking means you will not be able to send more packet because already there are some packets that are revolving throughout the network so to remove this problem we introduced a concept of time to live field that is ttl field now what is this ttl field this center will know that to reach to this destination how many hops the packet has to take so for example this is a first hop this might be the second hop this might be the third hop this might be the fourth hop this is the fifth hop sixth seventh eighth and ninth so you might know that how many hops a packet has to take to reach to the destination so that it does not stuck in infinite loop for example let us say if you sent a packet from sender to receiver but the packet is stuck in this infinite loop then it will always create a problem for other packets to reach to the destination therefore the sender has to use this gtl field so that if any packet is stuck in infinite loop it can remove that packet from the network okay so just read it out first so due to some malfunctioning of routing protocols a datagram may be circulating the internet and visiting some network over and over without reaching the destination so that means the datagram is stuck in infinite loop so this may create extra traffic in the internet which is very harmful because already we are sending so much data over the network that is it's already overloaded so if such kind of packets are stuck in the network so that will create an infinite loop now this time to leave field is used to control the maximum number of hops or routers visited by the datagram so what is the maximum number of routers a datagram can visit now when a source host sends a datagram it stores a number in this field and this value is approximately two times the maximum number of routers between any two host two times the maximum number of routers between any two host and each router that processes the datagram decrements the value by one and if this value after being decremented is zero then the router discards the datagram 
now for example here as you can see here we sent a datagram now in that datagram this is assuming this is representing your ip4 header now in this header we are having a time to leave field assuming we create the time to leave field value as 9 okay so when this packet is sent to the first router here now this time to leave field value is decremented from 9 to 8 now on the second router this will be decremented uh, from 8 to 7 on the fourth router it will be decremented from uh, 7 to 6 on the fifth router it will be decremented from 6 to 5 on the sixth router it will be decremented from 5 to 4 on the seventh router it will be decremented from 4 to 3 on the final destination if the ttl is not zero that means the packet is accepted so this ttl field is used to represent whether uh, i mean the packet should not stuck in infinite loop throughout the network so the packet can follow any path it can also even if the packet goes through this infinite loop as soon as the ttl field gets zero so packet will be discarded now for example assuming that here in the sender we have the ttl field as 9 and now your packet is stuck in infinite loop it is following this path over and over again so the packet is following infinite loop like this in that case what happens here because the first hop here the ttl field will become 9 to 8 now when the packet will go to this hop so ttl field will become 8 to 7 when the packet will go to this hope, the TTL field will become 7 to 6. When the packet will go to this room, hope the TTL field will become 6 to 5. And further here, uh, the TTL field again, the received TTL field is 5, it will be decremented from 5 to 4. Here the TTL field that is received is 4, it will be decremented to 3. Here the TTL field again that is received is 3, it will be decremented to 2. Here the TTL field that is received is 1, 2, it will be decremented to 1. And here the TTL field that is received is zero now as soon as the one that is decremented to zero and as soon as it becomes zero and it is not a destination then the packet is discarded the packet is discarded so this way you can use the ttl field to make sure that any packet in the network is not stuck in infinite loop that at least if the packet is not getting delivered to the des destination you have it can be removed from the network you have to remove that packet from the network and that is why we are going to use this ttl field that is a time to leave field and next field here is the protocol field as you can see here protocol now this protocol is field is used to identify what protocol are you using are you using a udp protocol or you are using a tcp protocol so tcp is a transport control protocol and further this apart of this we can have other protocols also for example you have icmp protocol that is uh, internet control messaging protocol you have igmp protocol which is internet group messaging protocol you have tcp protocol transport control protocol you have udp you have ospf you have different kinds of protocol that is present so we are going to discuss about these protocols in more details again we have to study this icmp protocol in more detail we have to study this tcp protocol in more detail and we have to study this udp protocol in more detail you should know what is the working of IGMP, you should know what is the working of OSPS, but it is not required for the examination. We have to study this ICMP protocol, we have to study this TCP protocol as well as we have to study this UDP protocol. So I'm going to take, I mean going to, to take you through the videos with ICMP protocol, you will see how this protocol is working and what is the benefit of this protocol. So just read out this theory, but uh, I'm not explaining you in the greater depth here the protocol field. Just understand that this field is used to remember which protocol are you using. Whether you are using a TCP protocol or whether you are using a UDP protocol or whether you are using a ICMP protocol. So I'm going to make an entire different set of video that will be a long video just on ICMP protocol and TCP itself is a very big chapter. So we are going to discuss about all these protocols in more details, but for now you just have to understand what are these protocol fields. So when the payload is encapsulated in the datagram at the source IP, the corresponding protocol number is inserted in this field. When the datagram arrives at the destination, the value of the field hopes to define which protocol the payload should be delivered, whether it is ICMP, IGMP or whatever kind of protocol. It just defines where to which protocol we have to deliver the packet. In other words, this field provides multiplexing at the source 
and demultiplexing at the destination. So it is this with the help of this field, I can send that whether it is a IGMP protocol or not. IGMP means it is Internet Group Messaging Protocol. That means you want to send a message to multiple hosts. So it's just like you have to do multiplexing or demultiplexing. So with the help of this field, you can do multiplexing and demultiplexing. Again, I'm going to discuss that in more details. And this is same like in transport layer, we are going to use the port number. It is just same like using the port number transport layer. But again, uh, the reason why I'm not discussing is because we have not studied the transport layer in more details. So what I'm going to do is in upcoming videos, first of all, I'm going to explain what is the ICMP protocol, what is the IGMP protocol, what is the TCP protocol and what is the UDP protocol. And again, after understanding these protocols, you will be able to understand why we are going to use this protocol field. Okay, so for now, just remember that we store the protocol, what kind of protocol, what protocol are we using in this field, whether it is IGMP, ICMP, UDP, TCP or OSPA. Now the next field is header checksum field. Now this header checksum field is actually for very important for checking whether there's any kind of error in the header or not. So I'm going to explain you how this checksum field is working. But for now, just understand we have a header checksum field, we identify that if this is your IP4 datagram, now in this IP4 header, whether there is some kind of mistake or whether there's some kind of problems or not. I mean, problems means there's some kind of errors or not. Now we understand that this IP is not a reliable protocol. So it does not check whether the payload carries a datagram is corrupted or not. So it does not check whether the payload is corrupted or not. This only checks whether the header is corrupted or not. So it is a responsibility of your TCP or UDP to check whether the payload is corrupted or not, but only uh, this IP4 is going only going to check whether the header is corrupted or not. Okay. So as you can see, uh, if you remember the diagram, if you don't have the diagram with you, just open the diagram again and see all the fields here. For example, here, this is the version field here, the service type field. Here uh, we have different fields here, for example, more fragment field, IP address, source IP, destination IP and so on. There are many, many various fields here. In this entire datagram, we are going to take all these fields. So for example, here, this is representing the first 16 bits. It is a set of four bits, four bits. And uh, I think this is four bits and so on. So sorry, uh, as you can see here, how many bits are used to represent every field here so come coming back to this so you can see the first four bits are here the next four bits are here then we have the eight bits here total 16 bits and further 16 bits is the total length field okay so we are going to make divide this in the set of four four bits okay so as you can see here we are having the first four bits here i'm going to take all this first four bits this is the first four bits, the second four bits, the third uh, eight bits and so on. The four bits, four bits, eight bits. Okay. And uh, this eight bits is further divided into two parts. One is a four bit and second is a four bit. And further this is your 16 bit and further this 16 bit is divided into four parts. One is four bits, four bits, four bits and four bits. So I'm going to make a set of four bits here. So this four is represented by this. Now this entire uh, service type field is divided into two sets of uh, uh, four bits. So as you can see here, so we have uh, four bits here. So the service type field is divided into four bits again. This is the header length field. This is header length field and this is your service type field. And further, this is the 16 bits. It is divided a set of four bits. So I'm going to divide the entire, uh, all the uh, values of this header in the set of four bits so that we can represent them in hexadecimal. So this is representing the hexadecimal values. Okay. So as you can see, this is the first row, which is of 16 bits, the second row, which is of 16 bit, there's a third row, which is of 16 bit, fourth row, which is of 16 bit, it is of 16 bit. So all these are representing 16 bit sets. Okay. So I'm going to take all these sets and I'm going to find the sum of all of them. So assuming that this is a sum, and here, this is the carry. So I'm going to wrap the sum. So I'm going to add the carry in the first bit here. So we get the wrapped sum of this entire header. Okay. 
Now, after finding the wrapped sum, I'm going to take the once complement of this wrapped sum. So it is the once complement of this wrapped sum. And now this once complement is a value that will be stored inside this checksum. Okay. So the checksum calculation is given here. So header is divided into uh, 16 bit sections. So whatever the header size is, so this entire header is divided into 16 bit sections. So as you can see, every row is representing 32 bits here, 32 bits here, 32 bits here, 32 bits here, and 32 bits here. So I'm going to divide this entire header into 16 bit sections. So this is the first section. This is your second section. This is your third section. This is your fourth section. This is your fifth section, sixth section, seventh, eighth, ninth, and tenth. So it is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and ten. So you are going to take all these sections and you are going to find the sum of them. And then you'll find the wrapped sum and then you'll do the once complement of this wrapped sum so that you can find the checksum. This is how the checksum will be stored. I hope that we have already seen the checksums, how the checksums are stored, how um, in error detection correction techniques, I've already explained you what is a checksum. So this checksum field here, it stores the wrapped sum of all these fields so that uh, at the destination side, we can identify whether there's any kind of error in the header or not. Okay. So in the previous video, we were discussing about the IP datagram. And uh, we are discussing the second row now, which is about the fragmentation. Now, let me do one thing. Uh, you must be having a diagram in front of your screen. Draw this diagram on your notebook and also draw these tables on your notebook. Because I feel that uh, once you are going to draw this, then only I'll be able to uh, make you understand each and everything more clearly. Draw both of these things in one single page. Pause the video and draw. So uh, I feel this uh, screen might not be very clear to you. That is why I ask you to draw this information. Okay. Now here uh, you can see this table. Now here uh, you can see this table is representing an IP header. Okay. So if you see every table, it is having few parts. For example, here this is the version field and this is your header length field then this is your type of service field or df field and this is your total length field of ip datagram this is your uh, identification field this is your uh, reserved field this is your do not fragment field this is about your more fragment field and this is your offset field. So we will discuss about each and every field one by one. So whenever you send some information or some data through the network, how the values in all these fields changes. Take some time and draw this diagram as well as draw this diagram. So I have taken these two diagrams from the frozen book. You can also open your book and you will find exactly the same diagram. Or you can just visit the website. This is www.digimentor.com to download the PDF copy of this presentation or you can say the PPT. Now, this is your original sender. So let us say the sender is sending some data packet whose size is around 4000 bytes. I mean to say we had an application layer, we had a transport layer, we have a network layer and then we have the data link layer and then we have the physical layer. Now the message that we got through the network layer that is around 4000 by to the network layer. I mean this network layer get, got a message from the above layers which is around 4000 bytes. Now to these 4000 bytes this network layer is going to add its own header. So this network layer is going to take this 4000 bytes of payload here and it is going to add its own header. So let us assume this header is of 20 bytes. Therefore, the total length of this entire packet is now 4020 bytes. So this is the total length and the header length is of 20 bytes. So if you see this uh, in this particular case, 
what is the information that we store in every field so the very first field is your version information so version is ipv4 so it is going to store 4 the second field is your header length field now because we are using a header which is of 20 bytes therefore this header length field is going to store a value which is 5 because it is a multiple of 5 okay so this is your version and this is your header length which is multiplicable of 4 so header length is of 20 bytes now this is your type of service field right now we don't need this and this is your uh, total length field and total length field is around 4020 bytes so this is stored in the form of binary in 16 bits I think you remember their sizes also now the very first field here is the identification field now this identification field actually it is a 16 bit field it is a 16 bit field and this identification is actually a unique number that is given to every IP datagram every IP datagram will be having a unique number which is called as an identification identification field so because uh, this identification is a unique number and we use 16 bits so it is just like a, we are storing a short integer in in the program in your main memory and that uh, actually for this we use a short int now because short int is of 2 bytes so this short int is containing the values between 0 to 2 raised to the power 16 minus 1 so this id field can contain any value between 0 to 2 raised to the power 16 minus 1 okay now we give an id to a datagram and then we'll increment this identification value by one so for example every datagram that is going to come from the network layer uh, after every datagram we are going to increase the value of this identification field now currently do not worry about this uh, do not fragment field so but here we are worrying about the more fragment field more fragment field how many data uh, grams how many datagrams are currently uh, coming i mean is there any other datagram or uh, uh, network layer packet that is coming after this packet so because it is having the value zero that means there is no other packet after this particular packet so you see uh, this diagram here original message was generated here this original message was around 40 bytes so 4000 bytes so with this 4000 bytes we added 20 bytes of header and there is no other byte there is no other uh, datagram that we have generated therefore more fragment field is going to be zero more fragment field means is there any other uh, IP datagram that will come after this or not if the no other IP datagram is coming after this therefore more fragment field is going to be zero then we will give this to this data link layer now data link layer will check the MTU of the network that is maximum transmittable unit of the network now for example purposes let us say the MTU of the network is 1400 bytes therefore these 4000 bytes needs to be broken down into packets of 1400 bytes okay so we'll break down into 1400 bytes the first packet then second will be 1400 bytes and third will also be of 1400 so third will be of 1200 bytes and then we'll add a header with every small packet here so this will become 1420 bytes this will become 1420 bytes and this will also become 1220 bytes so this is uh, the IP datagrams which are divided so original 4000 byte packet was divided into three packets and each of size 1420 1420 and 1220 so I just demonstrated this with the help of this diagram so this was the original packet so because it is of 4000 bytes 4000 byte means byte number 0 to byte number 3999 and with this 4000 byte we are having 20 bytes of header and this is uh, the network layer or you can say IP header this is 20 bytes of IP header and this is the 4000 byte of data that you got from the transport layer so this 4020 bytes is there the total size this is the identification number which is initially a random number a random positive number between 0 to 2 is power 16 minus 1 this is saying that there is no other packet that is that we are generating after this and this is the offset so offset is demonstrating how many packets are after this i mean how many packets already crossed this okay so i mean if you are having current packets so how many packets are uh, going 
before this particular packet we'll see that so we create we uh, we broken down this original message into three small fragments and the size of the first fragment here it is of 1400 bytes the size of second fragment is also 1400 bytes and the size of third fragment is of 1200 bytes so if you add 1400 plus 1400 plus 1200 which is 4000 bytes because the empty of the network was like that only maybe 1500 bytes or something so maybe i mean whatever the empty is according to the empty only we are going to break it so if it is LAN so maybe the empty of the LAN is 1500 bytes so we have taken each and every one of them and we have added a network layer header with them so with this we have added a header with this we have added a network layer header now the size of this packet will become 1420 the size of this packet will become 1420 the size of this packet will become 1420 so this header this header and this header so header of all these frames are going to store uh, 1420 as the total length so this is the total length field the total length field the total length field so total length field of a frame so you can clearly see here that uh, one original message was broken down into three messages and uh, the length of every message is around 1420, 1420 and 1220 bytes. Now because the original identification number was 14567, so when you have broken this message into smaller fragments, so this identification number will not change so identification number for every fragment is going to be same it means that whatever the data packet that you have created so whatever the data packet you have created initially that was a 4000 bytes now we were we have created an identification number for those 4000 bytes and then when we sent the data packet through the network so in the network because the mtu of the network because the mtu of the network was smaller maybe it is of 1500 bytes so we had to divide this original message into smaller fragments but the identification number will not change why because at the receiver's end when the receiver will get all these fragments the receiver should know that all these fragments actually belonged to exactly the same message or the same IP datagram so that we can apply some assembly algorithm on the receiver's end. So receiver will apply some assembly algorithm to combine these messages uh, according to their order. Okay. So this value, this value will not change. This value will again, they will, it will remain same in all these three fragments. Okay. So the fragments are fragment number one, fragment number two and fragment number three. So this is representing the fragment number one. This is representing the fragment number two and this is representing the fragment number three. So let me clear it again. So this is representing the fragment number one. It is fragment number two and it is fragment number three. So here we have this field, which is the more fragment field. So if you see this fragment, is there any other packets that is coming after this yes there are packets that is coming after this therefore here this more fragment field is one is there any other packet that is coming after fragment number two yes there is more fragment field is one is there any other packet that is coming after fragment number three no that is why the more fragment field is zero okay and then we have the fragment offset so fragment offset is actually demonstrating how many bytes are going ahead of this how many bytes are going ahead of a packet or of a frame so this is actually frame so how many guides are going uh, bytes are going ahead of this frame so that is demonstrated by offset now this offset field is of 13 bits and you can see the total size field here it is of 16 bits so you can see at maximum we can have a uh, maximum size that is going uh, that might be going before this particular packet is uh, represented by 16 bits which is 65,535 bytes so we have to make this offset field as a multiple of 8 just like this uh, uh, header length field is a multiple of 4 in the same way this offset field is a multiple of 8 now for example let me just show it to you with uh, an example here 
okay so if you take this fragment or this frame how many bytes are going ahead of this so this is 1400 bytes are going ahead of this 1400 bytes okay so uh, i think it should be 1420 so it, there are 1420 bytes are going ahead of this where 20 bytes is a header so if you divide this 1400 bytes by 8 so you will see so 8 uh, you can divide by 1 so this uh, remainder is going to be 6 and then it will be 60 so 8 uh, into 7 is 56 so remainder is going to be 40 so here you are going to have 5 so 175 therefore you can see uh, there because there are 1400 bytes are going ahead of this 1400 bytes of the same data packet is uh, 1400 bytes of the same data packets are going ahead of this therefore the offset of this will be 1400 divided by 8 which is going to be 175 so here it is going to store 175 okay and then if you see the fragment number 3 for the fragment number 3 how many bytes are going ahead of fragment number 3 so that is 1400 bytes in fragment number 2 and 1400 bytes in fragment number 1 so in total it is going to be 2800 bytes so in this offset field of fragment number 3 it is going to be 2800 bytes divided by 8 that is going to be 350 that is why here the offset value is 350 here the offset value is 175 and here the offset value is 0 because 0 means there is no byte going before this or ahead of this particular frame now what happened here is uh, we have divided the original message into three frames out of these three frames frame number one and frame number two are going through this this path because it is a connectionless protocol ip is a connectionless protocol and frame number two actually took a different path and the mtu of this path is different so maybe the mtu of this path is less mtu of this path is less according to the size of this particular frame so again this router this router is again going to fragment again going to fragment the given frame into smaller frames so that we can transmit this frame number 2 to this particular path taki so that we can transmit the frame number 2 in this particular path now so if you divide this into two uh, two frames so let us assume the first frame size the size of the first frame is 800 bytes and the size of the second frame is going to be 600 bytes so total 800 plus 600 is 1400 bytes so it was frame number 2 was of 1400 so we have divided uh, the frame number 2 through this part as 800 byte and 600 byte so with these 800 byte i'm going to add again 20 bytes of header with these 600 byte i'm going to add 20 bytes of header the size is going to be 820 and 620 so the size is 820 and 620 and again the identification number will not change identification number because these are all the fragments of exactly the same ip datagram because these are the fragments of exactly the same ip datagram therefore for every fragment which came from the same ip datagram the identification number will be exactly the same identification number will not change it will not change okay now look at this field so it is one so that means more fragments are following this we know that after uh, fragment number two then fragment number three is also there that is why the more fragment field here is one now look at the offset look at the offset offset here is 175 and offset here is 275 because uh, before this fragment number 2.1 there's only one fragment ahead of this so you can see we have fragment number 1 now we have fragment number 2.1 now we have fragment number 2.2 then we have fragment number 3 so fragment number 1 is of 1400 bytes fragment number 2 is of 800 bytes fragment number 3 2.2 is of 600 bytes and fragment number 3 is of 1400 bytes so what is the value of uh, offset for fragment number 2.1 so value will be 1400 divided by 8 that is going to be 175 what is the value of the fragment offset for uh, this fragment number 2.2 so how many uh, bytes are going ahead of this that is 1400 plus 800 which is 2200 bytes are ahead of this so 2200 divided by 8 which is going to be 275 that is why this value of offset is 
275. So you can see in the fragment number 2.2, the value of oxide is 275. So this way, this entire second row is actually taking care of the fragmentation. Now, I feel this might be a little difficult. I feel this might be a little tricky. Do one thing, just revise the video, watch it again and again until you do not understand this. Because this is one of the very important concept for your gate examination. There are sometimes they are going to ask questions based on this and these questions might be tricky if you do not know any of these fields and how these fields are working. So let us just read out some theory about this. You can rewind the video and watch it over and over again and again unless you understand the concept. So do not go forward unless you understand the concept in this point of time. Now look at this one. So we have uh, the fragmentation. So fragmentation is the value of MTU differs from one network to another network. For example, LAN the fragmentation is 1500 byte. But in case of WAN, sometimes it can be very huge, sometimes it can be very small. So if you divide the datagram into smaller fragments or in smaller frames, so that is process is called as fragmentation. Now, this fragmented datagram is then going to be reassembled at the user's end who is going to read the entire datagram. So when the datagram is fragmented, each fragment has its own header. The fragmented datagram may itself be fragmented and encounters the network through a even smaller MTU. For example, you can see here, uh, the fragments, the original message was fragmented into three messages and again because fragment number two chosen a different path that is why fragment number two is again divided into two different fragments. So a fragment can again be divided into fragments. But you can see here it is not going to be combined. These fragments are not going to be combined at the router. These fragments can only be combined at the receiver. Even the MTU of this path can be higher then the MTU of this path but still even if the MTU is higher in the path routers are not going to combine the fragments they are not going to assemble the fragments but rather only the receiver is going to reassemble the fragments so the receiver is going to take all these fragments and the receiver is going to combine these fragments to make one single IP datagram. Now you can see these fragments can uh, uh, receive out of order therefore at the receiver's end we have to apply searching and sorting algorithms to sort these fragments. So you can see in every router, every router in your, uh, every router, because they are having network layer, so they should implement or they have to implement searching and sorting algorithm for these fragments. I think it might not be necessary for the routers because routers do not, do not have to reassemble them, but only the host have to reassemble them to which you have to send the message. So the host or the receiver should have the capability of uh, apply searching and sorting. I think the routers do not need to apply searching and sorting algorithm because they do not require this. Okay. So these are the fields. The first field is the identification. So we need identification source IP to uniquely define a datagram. Then when a datagram is fragmented, the identification field is copied to all the fragments. As you can see here, this value is copied to all the fragments. And then the identification number helps the destination to reassemble the datagram. So when the destination is going to get the datagram, it will reassemble them according. If they have the same identification number, then all those packets will be reassembled. And then it knows that all fragments having the same identification value should be reassembled into one datagram. Now we had three bits here, which are the flag bits, which is the leftmost bit, which is reserved. We do not use it. The second bit is do not fragment field. We'll discuss this in later point of this video. And the third field is the more fragment field. We'll discuss. We discuss this more fragment field in this video. We've already discussed this. That is, is there any other packet that is coming after this particular packet. Do not fragment means when you do not want a router to fragment a packet, when you do not want a packet to be fragmented at by the router, then you are going to set the do not fragment field as one. For that, we actually we need to understand what is the ICMP packet. So what is the responsibilities of ICMP packet? So we'll discuss that later point of time. But for now, we just need to understand that uh, do not fragment means you are not going to allow the router to fragment the packet, but rather only the center can fragment the packet. 
Now, we know what is the fragment offset. Again, I told you it is a 13 bit field, which tells how many bytes are going ahead of this particular fragment. So, this is uh, the introduction uh, regarding the fragmentation that is the second layer of this IP datagram. So, we have just discussed the entire second layer. Now, let us go through the third layer, which is th I mean third row, which is the time to leave protocol and header checksum. So, that uh, we will discuss each and every field one by one and then we will conclude the total lectures of IP datagram. I hope that you enjoyed this lecture. Let us move on to the next lecture.